hello hello to everyone around the world whoever is listening and welcome back to mix masala with tg i am tenzin gopal aka funk blue and a big namaste from india slash goa we are continuing the episode conversation with lena vincent and this is session part two I would like to request my humble listeners if you have not listened to the previous session with Lena Vincent please go back and have a listen because it is going to give you a better insight and understanding of what she is doing what she wants to do and where this entire conversation is heading towards I am going to rewind a little bit so that we can get again some ideas about how this conversation is traveling from the previous session if you are interested in learning about visual arts culture design environmental activities utilizing art as a tool to express to communicate to exchange ideas and so on funk blue is the right space for you remember if you are enjoying this podcast and you love the contents and don't forget to hit like and share without much do let's get into this second session and i welcome lena vincent once again i love print making because i loved black and white and like i said i was also seeing a lot of artists doing some fantastic work they wanted me to take up art history even in my uh, you know bachelors but i wanted to spend my time in a practical uh, subject so i continued with a great interest in reading i had a very good you know very good art history teachers uh, at that point of time and uh, i continued my interest i knew i was very keen on the written word in contextualizing mm-hmm. of art in writing about what art is doing but at that point of time i wanted to practice so mm-hmm. i did my uh, bachelor's in graphic print making uh, under people like uh, ajit dubey and uh, shridhar murthy i enjoyed etching and i learned viscosity i i did lithography i did a little bit of screen screen printing which i didn't like would you uh, just a question mm. would you agree because you were engaged in the practice you know the practical aspect of doing things you know uh, yes has also somehow supported or helped you in working as a curator oh yes you know i you know, I, i think it's an advantage because he one does the doer was doing things and yes. making things and sometimes the process changes the entire narration also you know yes uh, when we first begin we have like this idea okay we are going to do this and this but then the process suddenly takes you to another level and uh, you know changes almost everything also you know sometimes completely so, and now you have curators who are also coming from not just the visual uh, background you know you have, you have architects coming in also yes. you have uh, literature uh, people coming also yes. in and maybe you can uh, speak a little bit about how you know your practice and uh, what you're doing how it's going along like together and yes yes so you know actually i have to say that originally this whole concept of curation itself was not so clear or prominent when i came out of uh, university in 2001 and i joined a gallery and i was you know a gallery manager understanding the business so when of you the industry exiting, so let's say the gallery that you were working for at that time were there also curator or was it like no not really you know i worked for time and space gallery in bangalore okay. and uh, i did know of curators who were doing some really good work like you know chaitanya samrani or you know the other people we were reading about Geeta Kapoor and the way she mm-hmm. spoke about the Indian modern and how does one look at a curator so these were ideas but they were not in a practical space okay so how did i learn about curation was absolutely because of simply having an aptitude towards that particular space mm-hmm. which i got to know later was a curatorial mode of thinking okay 
what it was was a very organic understanding that i want to be a mediator okay. i want to be in that space where i can mediate between the artist and the artwork the artwork and the audience mm-hmm. the gallery and the artist mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that was the space that was exciting to me so how did in the past years you know when you were just beginning how did the artists manage to then talk about uh, their work and things like that during an exhibition since curation was a very new practice at that time or maybe it was not there also in some places yes yeah, see i think that this was a very rich time you know the late 90s mm-hmm. and the early 2000s mm-hmm. when uh, bangalore was a very interesting space and i have written about this also in the past that there were a lot of artists like uh, surekha shantamani ravi kashi pushpamala uh, you know these were artists who were familiar in this scene mm-hmm. but they were also doing a lot of experimental work mm-hmm. so there was land art there was performance there was uh, new media which was called new media at that time you know making video art mm-hmm. uh doing work which was in the public space doing work with uh, you know within alternative spaces not looking at the gallery as the only yeah, space yeah. you know like suresh kumar uh, reddy mm-hmm. Su- suresh kumar gopal reddy suri as he's called these were the influences at that point of time it sort of opened up a view to understanding practice but also exhibition making in so many different ways yeah yeah now when you speak about how the artists articulated i think at that point of time a lot of these artists were also being chosen for residencies abroad these conversations were going on in these spaces like suresh jaram started one shanti road uh, jaga okay. which was a very important space for many of us which is now in fact hosting be fantastic i guess yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah archana yeah. prasad and yeah. freeman i mean jaga was a fantastic space i did my first entirely video show in 2010 or 11 which was like quite early i think yeah. i did an exhibition of video self portraits at that point of time okay. uh, which for me i think was a path breaking show but unfortunately we don't we didn't at that point have the resources to travel the show or take it to so many places and things like that but i showed artists like uh, tayaba lippi and uh, okay. uh, you know a couple of italian artists uh, sonia kurana uh, uh, you know also young artists whom i was working with at that time like venu vg abhishek hazra uh, you know it was a very very exciting learning period for me because i was also understanding the language of curation and what i wanted to do with mm-hmm. that uh, place you know that space but my understanding right from then was that i did not want to be stuck to a certain medium or mm-hmm. a certain kind of artist or a certain box yeah because sometimes you do find uh curators who work with very particular very specific or with like certain galleries which also emphasize on certain subjects or practice yes okay so you i to... i was very clear right <laughs> from then that i wanted to go on exploring because uh-huh. every individual artist has a different story to tell and everyone deserves the space of curation mm-hmm. which is something i feel that there is a sort of hierarchy also in terms of you know being biased about certain kinds of art in india or choosing only particular kinds of expression mm-hmm. or mediums just as you were saying just now so for me right from then i was working with folk artists because i was doing research in the folk art space i was working with print makers because i was a print maker myself and we had a collective in bangalore that was a print making collective plus i then you know was introduced to vasvo x vasvo by motushi another friend of mine uh, in kolkata and i began to work on his collection of print making uh, and you know i was continuing with research on heritage 
because I was, you know, engaged with a, an educational project with the Institute of Ayurveda in Bangalore. Okay. So, you know, I was working in these multiple spaces, but without any conflict because I was learning from each space and sharing from each space. Mm -hmm. Later on, I became a, a, a curator for, let's say, I, I began to work on a single project with Baptist Coelho and uh, the Artport Making Waves, which is a large curatorial organization, which was then based in France, uh, but is an international organization using art uh, for climate action. Mm -hmm. And subsequently, I became a curator with them. I curated an entire series of projects, which was about food across different cities, including Bangalore and Hyderabad. So, when you are going from places, one place to another, uh, from one gallery to another gallery, when do you know, when do you decide, okay, now, you know, I have had my fail. Mm. Now I want to go to some another place, try another flavor. Uh, what triggers you at that time? Is it just going with the flow sort of thing? Or do you have, to, okay, this is interesting, I like this uh, work that they are doing, and then you go approach. How, how does it I think that it has been very organic. Very organic. Um, serendipity plays a huge part in my life. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, I have been sometimes in the right place at the right time. I have had wonderful mentors, people who have not hesitated in recommending my name to another space or another gallery or for another project. So, in this way, I cannot even demarcate specific mm -hmm. things that I have done for my own advancement. I have never, I have to say that I have never been a very pushy person in that I have never tried to climb any ladder or push myself into any specific like place. Sometimes uh, because uh, we are just beginners now, we just starting now in this art scene. Yeah, for us it's still very new and we and there's so much we want to do or execute but then again in terms of financial uh, status or because of resources or yes you know like i am i in college like i'm totally introvert like okay i never like <laughs> only with few people i talk you know i'm comfortable talking with but then like i never like spoken to a lot of people that's so you, strange and you're, yeah, you're and running then, a podcast and the only reason i do podcasts is because you know when i was young uh, my mom used to read books for us for that time i'm not a reader i read comic books but not okay. intense literature or novel sort of books you know i was never into that love like, yeah when i was a kid hmm. although my brothers and sisters or my siblings are readers so i was the only one like who's not reading so my okay. mom would always give me like jataka tales or tingle hmm. comics and all these things because there are a lot of visuals right but then she would do a lot of recordings at that time we had cassette you know? yeah so she would do a lot of recordings of like really good uh, story books uh, literatures and then I'll just sit and listen. And Where uh, did you grow up? I'm from Himachal. Okay. I'm from Himachal. You're from Magrodganj. Nice. It was during uh, the pandemic time because of all this separation and everything and isolated, uh, just surrounded by concrete walls and right. uh, you start, you know, maybe because you have a lot of time now, you cannot yes. go out, what to do. So I started doing a lot of writing. I do song writing and poem writing, but okay. I don't share. That's just for, for myself. I don't. Right. And I started reading. I do loud reading because for me, that's one way of getting uh, engaged with the content. Otherwise, it's like silent reading is after five minutes, you are asleep. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so I, I do All a lot right. of loud reading. That's when I got the idea. Okay, uh, I'm not good with crowd and uh, yeah. you know, talking to strangers like directly. Nay hota hai. I say I like voice doesn't come out. <laughs> but then uh, yeah, maybe I can start with the people I know. Yes. Yeah. And that's why in the start, if you listen to my podcast, it was uh, covering subjects that I am into, you know, like familiar with. Yeah, so environment, uh, designs, art, fashion, anything like all the things that I have always been loving. I mm. thought, you know, I can maybe 
Channel is to yeah. And then uh, because once I started doing this uh, podcast, I yeah. also realized that you know I'm actually not so bad with it. Like I can I can make it interesting if I want. One to one communication, I'm very comfortable with. Mm. That. You know, if there's five six people in the room, then I'm like I'm silent. I'm not there. Podcast came that way, and then I interviewed few of my batchmates, some right. junior uh, students also, because mm. I wanted to also see uh, how we are doing. No, no script, nothing. We are just talking, you know, like yes, yes. Chai, suta, pike, aise baat kar rahe. Aise hi baat kar rahe. And uh, so, dive dive, gradually I s- now have people like interested, you know. Now when I ask them, in the beginning if I was very scared like to ask. Yeah. Any, anyone like? Would you want to like mm. sit and talk? Yes. And uh, so the response was not so much. But now I feel like it's little bit like people are starting to notice like what I'm doing. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm just trying to call in people, you know, who are doing different things, and they have yeah. a different way of looking at the world. Also, you know. Mm. You know. Otherwise, everyone life is okay doing. It's yeah, like it goes running on. Running on the sim- similar principles, but then you know the process. I am always about the process. Now yeah. this process is podcast process is, has led me to you, like you know, to go uh, having this conversation. So it is taking me to different different places. Whereas my art for some time, you know, I had to like just stop for a while. You know, I have to find like a different space to like breathe in. You know, as a whole, jata na kabi kabi. Are now with that you know I have to I mean I have to butt in over here because this is this is the space that really interests me. Mm-hmm. जब ये problem हो जाता है ना <laughs> तो I have been very 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 fond of working with young artists because I find that progress that point of development those oh. years of development and building a language and learning something very very interesting to me that is. that is my medium yeah. if if i am an artist that is my medium that space so even though you know i have been advised uh, by different people who are my well wishers that lena itna sara kaam kar liya abhi you know work only with senior artists but for me the mm-hmm. crucial engagement of my own practice is with young artists okay. to to be part of these journeys mm-hmm. where i can contribute something or help in building a language or helping mm. in the direction of the artist and i know that these dialogues are crucial because and these things don't only happen to young artists they can happen at any yeah. age yeah. you know but this is an area which i'm really interested in and after a number of years of thinking about it and understanding that there are so many gaps in uh, our education system and in creative you know systems i decided that i want to build something like an like a mentorship mm-hmm. program and even though i was doing it informally for so long it was first with the piramals and now okay. with sunaparanta center for the arts goa okay. that i am running a formal mentorship program and in this current one there is it's it's for creative people all together it's not only for fine artists and there's no age criteria right. so i have people from age 21 yeah. to 63 uh-huh. and it is such a wonderful space of course it's a very structured curriculum for sure uh, you know spaced out over a 10 month period where we are tackling many different subjects but uh, we have finished one episode and it was a huge learning and and it's wonderful to see all those 16 people from the you yeah. know previous batch doing fantastically well and now with the second batch you know i'm having such wonderful conversations so for me at this point of time you know i feel happy i'm doing that i'm working with my colleague akshay mahajan on goa familia which is a project on archival family photographs yeah. in goa which is a serendipity Uh, arts foundation project and i am working on developing a um, virtual museum of kodava culture okay. uh, if you know kodava culture is coming from kurg which is uh, 
Coorg is in one part of Karnataka. Okay. You have you heard of Chikmagalur? Chikmagalur, ha, mention. Okay, where all the coffee comes yeah, from? Yeah, yeah. Coffee comes from. So Coorg is the called the Scotland of India. It is the the place for coffee where okay. you know coffee estates have been okay. established. So uh, the Kodavas have a very very interesting history, okay. and uh, they are sort of talked of as the warrior clans and their antecedents and ancestry is very like interesting Mangalore, right? Mango. It, it's the other side of Madikeri yeah. if you have heard of Madikeri yeah. I don't know maybe yeah. you have not but Kurg is a wonderful place to explore All so I am right. working with a team on developing a virtual museum of, mm-hmm. uh, of Kodava culture and it's been fantastic because we have spent a lot of time, it's the kind of thing that mm-hmm. we were talking mm-hmm. about, what I really like to do, on-site research, documenting uh, rituals, documenting festivals, uh, you know, spending time with people, mm-hmm. going into their homes, eating their food, yeah. engaging with culture at its source, rather than through books or through wherever. So. Oral histories are really a very huge part of my life in the last few years and I continue to, you know, also, do like this same thing. Also, tradition, every history is passed on orally at that yes. time because a lot of the, uh, people did not maybe uh, have the, you know, privilege access. of, yeah, access of writing and uh, learning. A lot of the things were always verbally passed down from generation to generation. Yes. Uh, Yes, and we have we have such a massive, uh, you know, yeah. layered culture in yeah. India. If you go from corner <laughs> to corner, of course, urbanization and what you find in the, you know, in urban centers is rather homogenized to a certain extent, mm-hmm. like like the McDonald's and like the, you know, yeah. these Starbucks stores. Uh, a lot of it is ironed out, but when you go back into the landscape, when you when you go back into rural India mm-hmm. or you know even semi-rural India, you will see these layers of. Few days back, I was having just a casual conversation with an artist. I just told him I think I have to go back to Himachal because I, after coming to Baroda, I was not visiting Himachal. I was going Gosh. everywhere else. Uh, Pondicherry, Kerala, going into the rural spaces to for documentation. Right. I do a lot of photography and uh, sound recordings and things like that. Okay. Uh, just for fun only. At that time, I was not this part of my work or something. It's just something I enjoy doing. Mm. Meeting up with the local, learning how they make their spices, textiles, and things like that. I just go randomly and whatever it is, I'll like, okay. And uh, so he was, for your work, it's not necessary that you have to travel to Himachal. But then I was trying to tell him that, you know, uh, it's maybe important because now the kind of sound works that I'm trying to do hmm. has a lot of influence. It's coming All from right. that space. Nagrodganj is again a very spiritual place. I mean, it's an international hotspot also yes. for people to come and visit and chill. Similar to Goa. You have a lot of Himachalis from Goa. And I think an Anglo-Indian community. Yeah. So I was always uh, surrounded with a lot of uh, Westerners, but then settled in India, you know, and they talk in Hindi, we mm. have English and uh, all this. And uh, I never like properly interacted with Indian, Indian communities. Right. You know, and for me and my siblings, we always faced an issue of identity because uh, if we were in the Tibetan community, we were always labeled as, you know, to Angres hai, yeah, you are a Nepali Indian. Right. If you are, if we are in the Indian, then it's like you, you are Tibetan or you are Nepali. So right. we were always having this uh, identity crisis, which for me was never an issue because I did not talk to people. Yeah. But for my sisters and my mm. uh, brothers, it was a uh, very, what do you say, uh, it affected them a lot. Right, Especially to understand. my sister, you know, like, uh, because she is the eldest and she knows where we were, uh, the stories of our original biological family, but then, you know, I, I was too young to understand all this, so yes. I did not, like, 
pay any attention even now also i don't talk about it but then my sister because she was the eldest and she had seen what was happening and how we you know came to this new family you know so for her it was always very sensitive like this this subjects were very sensitive to her finally now at this age you mm. know i'm wondering you know i question myself where do i come from is it okay. important for me to go back and uh, try and connect with my biological parents in order to understand right. or will it change the way yeah. i see or no you know these are some questions regarding what who i am then there's the other side who i really want to go and meet my biological parents maybe not because she is my mother for me she is both yes. my father and mother you know and yes. it's a very personal thing to talk about but then now when i want to work let's say uh, i do like sculptures and uh, paintings and things like that but more than focusing on the socio political external factors that mm. are affecting me i took more about the inward journey about my what's happening mm. mentally or yeah. psychologically mm. and uh, so there sometimes you know i get a lot of uh, help through paintings because uh, the colors can do a lot of translation good translations you know yes and sound and music has always been part of me since i was a young kid i mm. started doing djing uh, when i was in 10th standard like i ran away from home okay so i started doing my djing and things like that electronic music at that time hmm. it was good money working in a bar and you get free, yeah. free beers and things like that uh, intense standard <laughs> uh, i was oh. very like I, i after a certain point like my i did not wanted to stay home because people that were always around us all my mom's friends they were all creative people all doing lot of traveling here and there and yeah, you know, when you yeah. hear their stories it's like i need to get out you know yeah yeah so completely now i'm like okay now how can i move forward how can i take these narrations or stories or experiences and now translate them into maybe a work of art or series of artwork pandemic was a very good time for me to get refreshed because everything slowed down and and suddenly now there's sound coming in not just working with traditional form of music but also like in terms of sorry i'm just babbling about my work no it's <laughs> interesting and also connecting to the tribal form of art so yeah. in udaipur my friend and i we had gone when i reached there it was like the last day of garbi uh, there is a practice that ha- takes place during the navratri period and it's apparently like entire festival is run by the males like from different different villages yes and every year there are different groups of males they fast for like almost two months and then they have a very pop culturish uh, yeah get up. but they also dress as female yeah and then they do the entire narration i started going on documenting all these practices opening up things for myself along yes. the way in terms of uh, how i want to maybe use certain things or utilize my ideas or yeah or you know it's very interesting to hear this because i am i'm talking increasingly to a lot of people who are now mm-hmm. very happy to work within these different spaces mm-hmm, mm-hmm. who are not not limited let's say to a conventional medium or to stick to some particular uh-huh. manner of research or mm-hmm. expression but to work in a multiple so i was i was coming to this question for you since you're like very senior right and uh, you have a lot senior of experience senior is not the word i like but now when you view our generation's mm-hmm. work the experimentation that are happening what is your say in that how do you see things going i feel that uh, this you know this younger generation at least in the ones that i meet coming out of urban spaces etc are quite confident uh, confident about making different choices mm-hmm. not not terribly worried about the notion of economic success mm-hmm. because how how you know you you can't do performances and sound and a sort of really interdisciplinary work which is in the public space and earn money from it yeah, it becomes yeah. a complex question yeah. so i'm seeing that a lot of young people are not hung up on this whole idea of i have to make art and sell it and make money mm-hmm. they are finding different ways in which to 
work on things professionally and also create art which is something which is connected deep within them mm-hmm. you know so there is a sort of fearlessness uh, i am i am observing a kind of confidence uh, on the other hand there are also there is also a lot of confusion mm-hmm. so there are two sides to this that there is also quite a bit of confusion because there is a there is still you know this idea that so and so is doing this and this and you know has got that residency so maybe i'll also just try it out like is it really essential to do a performance for this first question yourself yeah so you know these are the kinds of observations i'm making but times are different and you know and do you have you tips or suggestions to the listeners like myself mm-hmm. are in this process you know do you have any suggestions that would like so uh, let let me talk about something that is very recent for me so um i have a 14 year old son and you know being a mother and running a household and still pursuing a very successful let's say touch wood you know successful cu- curatorial career and enjoying myself in between it was it's it's been a very layered journey but i realize that i have to keep learning mm-hmm. and i think to continuously refresh your own areas of knowledge and uh put yourself in situations to have new experiences is something that's very important so a month ago i have joined one of my previous mentees dance class so i am learning bharatnatyam now oh. and um it gave me a deep sense of satisfaction that you know oh. i also you know i have to i have to practice what i preach i have to do the things that i'm telling all these people that i am mentoring mm-hmm. i want to be in this space where i create time for doing things to learn to make experiments to do something entirely new mm-hmm. i created a new body of work where i am actually painting on my body i am okay. my my practice is rather line based and so i graduated from doing these lines on paper to drawing on my own skin and though it's a very um, intuitive and personal uh, work as of now i'm planning to collaborate with you know these the same dancer whom i'm learning from mm-hmm. in terms of maybe creating a collaborative project and so i would say keep learning allow that space for self realization of something how much ever work you are doing for other people how many ever projects you have take that time out and take those walks and enjoy nature and join that dance class or that calligraphy class or that you know strange thing that you always wanted to do because life is short okay. and we we really realize that more than anything else spend time with friends go meet that person that you have to you know leave off those 100 conventions that you that you feel make you part of this framework of society i think that we all need to step out of those boxes at some time or the other and yeah. and realize different things i think that's on top of my mind so that's what i'd like to share okay lena thank you very much thank you so much if anyone wants to know more about lena you can follow her in insta facebook yes. and uh, do you have a website i don't but it's under construction now okay uh, so you can uh, message her if you have any queries or she will be happy to guide you and thank you very much for thank you i had fun cheers see you soon if you have any suggestions advices requests or As a matter of fact if you have a story that you want to share to the entire world remember my listeners funk blue is a space a community that i'm trying to create where people can share their stories with everyone